All right, so this is geared or aimed specifically at fighters and those who are, are going to be fighting professionally or want to make a career out of fighting. Uh, so whether you think it's something you want to do competitively or you know it's something you're going to do with the rest of your life, let me, let me ask you this. Who should be a fighter? Who should fight? Obviously no one. Now, what was your reaction to that? If you said, oh, yeah, you're right. No one should actually fight. You probably don't want to be a fighter. If your response was, fuck off, now we're talking, okay? So if you are already damaged and psychologically fucked up and confrontational and defiant, you should probably, okay, now you're a fighter, fighters fight. And this is who I'm talking to. Everyone else, eh, you know, watch if you want, but the message is not for you. If you're going to be a professional fighter, you are responsible for everything. You step in the cage, you step in the ring, there's a ref, maybe, depending on are you fighting underground, are you fighting on a reservation, are you fighting in North Carolina. Um, actually, there's a lot of good boxing in North Carolina, that wasn't fair. But not everyone. There's a referee, but there's no guarantee he's going to do his job. There's a doctor, but that doesn't mean he's going to be able to save you. Defend yourself at all times. Okay? That means from bell to bell, but it also means in your entire career, your entire life. You're responsible for everything. So either you learn it or you make damn sure that people around you know their shit and have your best interest at their heart. Mix your own Kool-Aid. You've heard the expression, Drink the Kool-Aid, uh, mix your own Kool-Aid and drink it. Everything I say, yeah, I believe. That doesn't mean you have to believe it. But you can question it, you can look into it, you can use it as an informed opinion in which to educate yourself with or against or around to form your own educated opinion, but fucking get educated, okay? Just because you're out there beating the shit out of each other doesn't mean you're stupid, and actually fighters are not stupid. Fighters are smart enough to know what's up <laughs> most of the time. Some fighters are stupid, and that's fine. We'll beat the shit up. It's fine. Uh, but you're not stupid. I know you're not stupid because you're watching this. Mix your own Kool-Aid. Mix it right. What fighting style do you have? Does, is it the right style? Think about this. Does your style fit your personality your body capacity, your body type. All right? So, are you an aggressive person? Is your style aggressive? Are you not so aggressive, but more the kind of guy that finds loopholes and angles and, right? Does your style fit your personality? And it's up to you to figure out what style you want, what style matches your capacity. Now, when I talk about capacity, what is that? Well, some people have big hearts, literally big hearts, and they're good at aerobic stuff. You know, they can run marathons. That is not my style. <laughs> to me, this is the most difficult style to master uh, and if you are built for it, uh, maybe you are less muscular and your heart is proportionally large, uh, you're good at triathlons, you're good at distance events, uh, that's the style you want to incorporate. Think of the Diaz brothers. Uh, they are probably the most successful adaptation of this style. Hoist Gracie, probably back in the day, also uh, highly technical, highly skilled, uh, more of a fluid and flowing kind of... Uh, anyway, I think the Diaz brothers have mastered this style of fighting and that's why they're awesome. Uh, another style, or the other style, is what I'm going to call bell to bell. And I need to speak about it with respect because it's a legitimate style and it is 
for the sport, even though personally I disdain it. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's, I'm contradicting myself, but hey, I'm not perfect, fuck it. Uh, Bell to Bell Fighters. They have a relatively high pace. So they're fast, they're not powerful. Demetrius Johnson, uh, George St. Pierre. Um, hey, they're champions. They've set records. They are dominating the game. All right. So this is a style of fighting that's good for the sport or fits the sport. But uh, to me, it's not fighting. Uh, fighting is me fucking you up. That's fighting. And anything other than that is a game, okay? See, I believe we should keep the Mars in martial arts. People talk about keeping Christ in Christmas, right? Mars is the god of the war. Martial arts are war arts. Let's keep the fight in the fight game. That's the third side. The finishers, the killers, Mike Tyson, Robbie Lawler, uh, Ronda Rousey, <laughs> okay? People who get yelled at by their mom if it goes into the second fucking round, okay? Those are the fighters that the Mars system of power training is designed for. Uh, obviously, I'm biased. Here's the thing though, power training makes every style better. If you're an endurance athlete, if you're a middle athlete, if you're a power athlete, power training is going to improve your game. Endurance training, on the other hand, is only going to help endurance fighters. Uh, so the Diaz's are the only ones that got this shit figured out. Wait, did I just say that George St. Pierre doesn't have power? Yeah, I did. Uh, go back to 2008 and watch him fight John Fitch. And boom! How many times does he land a perfect straight right or overhand right or a head kick? And he rocks Fitch, but he doesn't annihilate him. He doesn't knock him out. He doesn't end the fight. It goes the distance. It shouldn't have. Uh, Joe Riggs knocks Fitch out. So it's not that Fitch can't be knocked out. No, it's a matter of power. Okay, so when I say somebody doesn't, have, we'll get into power, that's all I talk about, is power training and explosivity. This is, it's the holy grail kids. This is the shit. Are you stronger, more explosive? Are you more of an endurance style person? Hopefully by now, you, you know this about yourself. Uh, hopefully by now you've had some experience uh, whether it's a track and field or some other sport where you know <laughs> that you're stronger than other guys, you're faster than other guys, or that you can outlast other guys. And women, gals. Uh, I, I love female fighters. I just speak English. Sorry, we don't have a universal term for the genders, but uh, I am so pro-female MMA. Uh, anyway. Back to the message. <laughs> it's your job to figure out, does your style match your personality? Does your style match your body? And your capacity, what can you do? Can you get, well, everyone can get bigger, stronger, faster, better. All right, and that's your fucking job. Get bigger, stronger, faster, better. We'll talk about cutting weight in another video. Stop doing it, but we'll talk about it. <laughs> so, get bigger, stronger, faster, better. Find out what your capacity is and make sure your style fits that capacity. So that means choosing the right coach, choosing the right style or the right system of martial arts and the right combination of martial arts. And by the way, boxing is a mixed martial art. There's different styles of boxing, different schools. It's a mixed martial art, kids. Choose your coach. Choose your coach carefully. Choose your school carefully. And if it's not the right fit, grow up. 
move on. Do it professionally, do it gently, do it appropriately, but find the right fit. If your style doesn't match, your personality doesn't match, your body type doesn't match, your capacity, change your style. Because you can't change your personality. You're a fucking asshole. You can't change your body type. That's your parents' fault. But you can change your style. There are some exceptions. There are coaches. Here's actually, the if you got a good coach, great coaches can teach one style incredibly well. They're called grand masters. However, there are also style masters, coaches that can adapt what they teach to fit the attributes of the warrior they're training. Uh, Guru Dan <laughs> truly is a guru. Guru Dan Ino Santo, uh, he did this with a string of athletes out of the Kali Academy. And they're now some of the best trainers in the world. Uh, Paul Vunak, Eric Paulson. And if you look at just those two and how incredibly different they are, it's because they're incredibly different, incredibly different personalities, thought processes. Uh, but Guru Dan said, Paul, I'm gonna train you this way, Eric, I'm gonna train you that way. That's what a great coach does, unless he's a grandmaster of one style. Now, if you have the grandmaster of one style, make sure that style is the right style for you. Or make sure you got a Guru Dan, or an Eric Paulson, or a Christian Montes, or a Primo, Bella Rosa. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you. Talk to you later. Guys, listen, we are making the world a better place. We're saving lives. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube page. And if you're not on YouTube, if you're coming across this through another venue, Facebook, whatever, log in to YouTube and subscribe. Thank you.